Hello and welcome to our conversation about the SRA accounts rules, uh, particularly looking at the results from the 2023 accounting period. Uh, my name is Matt Melcham, I'm a partner at Westcott's Chartered Accountants, uh, and I'll be hosting this session. Uh, I'm joined by a number of uh, friends and colleagues from accounting firms around the country. Uh, we're all part of members of the Prime Global Group. Just a reminder that the Prime Global Group is one of the largest associations of accountants in the world uh, with 300 members. Prime Global combines the expertise and resources of a global association uh, where we all come together and benefit from the group expertise in accounting, auditing, tax and associated services. It's a group that we all benefit from being a part of, uh, sharing ideas, insights. Hopefully you'll learn something from our conversation. So rather than introducing everybody, I will pass over to each person in turn to introduce themselves and their expertise. I'll hand over to Claire. Thanks, Matt. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Claire Watkins. I'm a partner in Bozicott Chartered Accountants. We're a London-based firm of approximately uh, 650 people. And my role in the firm is to head up the professional practices group, which means I work primarily with law firms. Uh, ranging in size from startups to long established firms on the, the accounting, tax and regulatory side of things, but also on a lot of advisory work such as restructuring, expanding the, the partner tier, uh, mergers and acquisitions and that sort of thing, and, and indeed internal issues to do with succession planning and that sort of thing. Thank you, Claire. Alice? Thank you. Morning, everybody, or hello, should I say, depending on what time you're listening to this. Um, I'm a manager at Larkin Gowan, and I look after our legal sector, where I assist a variety of law firms across Norfolk, Suffolk and North Essex. We deal with all sort of the compliance side of things, so the accounts and the tax. But but not only that, we, we like to offer further strategic advice and planning, whatever that might look like for the particular client, and um, help help them with the um, challenges that they may be facing. In addition to that, we have extensive knowledge of the SRA accounts rules and, and help on uh, keeping all of our clients uh, with their compliance. Lark and Gowan has six offices across the region and we have a full service offering, whether that be audit, accounts, tax um, and extend into corporate finance and insolvency as well. So do get in touch if we can help you. Thank you, Veronique. Hello, I'm Veronique, Partner and Head of Professional Services at Westcott's. Westcott's is a firm of accountants and advisors in the southwest of England, serving predominantly Devon and Somerset. We have about 16 offices, serving individuals and businesses um, in the area for over 30 years. I particularly enjoy working with the legal sector, again with Alice and Claire, looking at strategy helping clients along the way with any challenges that come up and just en enjoying collaborating and helping businesses and practices grow whichever way they want to go. Thank you, Veronique. Now, the, the 2023 SRA period is finally over, which we're all grateful for. And I finished a while ago. So first of all, we're just going to talk about uh, a few of the uh, reviews that we've seen and our trends that we may have seen in the last SRA season. And we'll start with Claire. Any, anything you've seen this season? Yes, I think one of the trends I've seen is, uh, is a move towards greater automation. And I think probably it really was kick-started by the pandemic because, of course, everybody was forced to use less paper and find ways to, to do the work using more automated means. So I have noticed that a lot of firms now are, at least on the accounting side of things, they're pretty well paper free. There are no pink slips anymore and signing things in pen. It's much more email authorization and automated processes. So that makes things much quicker. Um, so, yeah, that's something I've noticed across the board, actually. And obviously the bigger firms are able to do it more easily, but the smaller firms um, are in a way more agile. So, so they're coming on board as well. I would, yeah, yeah, I would agree with that um, as well, Claire. Lots of um, our firms are embracing the technology more, looking at um, sort of time-saving methods that you know can help them focus on other things. Um, there are still, you know, the the usual technical breaches that that we see, um, 
However, we have noticed that they've reduced in the last few years, perhaps with, you know, everybody getting used to the the hybrid way of working or perhaps getting more more people back into the office. Residual balances is something that we find a lot of our clients still struggle with, though. So um, that's something that we're working with our clients to try and get on top of. Yeah, yeah absolutely I, I concur with that and in terms of clerical errors they've they've significantly reduced um coming out of the covid years and at one point um the bank reconciliations we found um simply just weren't being signed off or physically stamped um at the right time and actually it just it goes along the lines of the fact that we've you know, we often have coffers who don't have a finance role um, needing to act in a finance role manner in these ways and it's their duty to do that and, and whether we need to offer any extra training in that area to help them um, because often we will find some old reconciling items on the bank reconciliations or or perhaps things that have been there which they don't fully understand and just need a, a hand with um, I was just explaining about how how we can help them there so there's been a number of changes in the rules since 2019. Uh, what changes have you guys seen, you know, the firm's been making since those changes? Alice, should we start with you? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's safe to say the pace of the, any changes that certainly that our clients made was very slow, probably not helped by the fact that the change came in and shortly after we were then, you know, launched into a pandemic. But certainly, I think as we touched on in the last question, firms are now looking to to modernise, embrace the technology. Um, So I think that is then extending to looking at their policies and how that they how they can make changes to make their lives easier. So I think we could even see less clerical errors going forward if firms simply make a change to some of their policies to extend what prompt means for them and, and their clients. Claire, Veronique, any further thoughts on the rule changes of 2019? I think it's just going along the lines of exactly what Ellis has said there in terms of allowing firms to define what they mean by paid promptly and, and gradually we're seeing more law firms define their policies and the key thing here is just documenting it and then making sure that they're following their own procedures um, as part of that. Definitely, because that's essentially what we're testing them against now, isn't it? So, I think they're starting to use the, the, the rules to their advantage now in a way that the rules were set out to, to do. So uh, as we've said, you know, the, the, the fix a problem promptly rule was, was quite restrictive and now they're able to accommodate the fact that they might have a, a finance manager that doesn't work five days a week. So actually, if they can't fix something on a Friday because that finance manager isn't in until the following Monday, that's okay as long as they've got it in their policies and procedures that that's what they're going to do. So I think the more we see about uh, flexibility of the rules, um, as long as you know on the underlying um, rule is that you look after client money properly, I think it'll make things easier for law firms. So what further changes uh, could firms be doing to make their lives easier? From your you know, experience between the three of you, you've seen a lot of cases. What, what could firms do to make their jobs easier? So I think generally with interest rates rising, that's what we, we've seen has been a hot topic, really. And, and just making sure that their interest policy is fair and then making sure that their terms of engagement document that in terms of how they charge interest. And really, there, there, there are useful tools out there within their software um, or even banking facilities that enable you to calculate that interest and assign it properly. I think looking at the de minimis limit on interest is one that uh, that we've all seen. And I think firms are starting to consider whether the de minimis limit, which has typically been at £50, um, uh, sorry, at £20, could increase to £50 or even higher than that. So a lot of my clients have now increased it to £50. So below that level, they won't account for interest to clients or they won't pay interest to clients. That obviously has to be in the letter of engagement to make it clear. But some firms that, that I have uh, are pushing it up to as much as £100. So as long as it's made clear to the client, I think that's that's acceptable. Um, and more firms are considering looking at it. Yeah, agreed. With 
the level of client interest that um, interest being received on the client account even at the moment being you know a lot higher than in previous years it is definitely a hot topic something that we've also considered um, for a number of our clients in relation to the interest point is the partial exemption for VAT and I would recommend that um, that is reviewed as well just to make sure that you're not caught caught under these rules in in most cases I would expect that you know law firms don't have a problem but just making sure that it it has been looked at would probably be a good starting point if you're if you're looking at your interest policy as well it's a very good point Ellis because I don't think people really know the rules that well so it is a very good point and yes do get in touch with any one of us if you've got queries on that so we we all like a horror story um so It'd be great to hear from from your experience of the uh, season of 2023, anything that people can learn from, things to look out for that we can pass on to our clients as as good advice. Claire, have you got any horror stories from 2023? Well, there are a few. Yes, we we do get involved in uh, being asked to be sort of expert witness or if a firm that might might not have used us as their reporting accountants, but they have got themselves into difficulty in the SRA, they're having to defend themselves to the SRA. They sometimes get us involved to write a report to support what they're doing to try to prevent whatever happened from happening again. So we do get involved in some of those during the year. And although, you know, one or two of them were originated by some some kind of fraud and I'm sad to say most of them are just that um, there's a little bit of complacency that might have crept in so somebody might have been looking after a client for a very long time and just isn't as vigilant as they should have been as about what they're still doing for that client I always refer to it as scope creep which we have in our own business as well you want to be helpful to your client and when the client starts to drift away from the engagement that was actually agreed um, you know, you start to do extra work for them and maybe it, it, you know, it wasn't part of the original scope. Now, for, for law firms, that can get them into difficulty. So I think it's just worth making sure that everybody and partners can cross-check each other on this. Everybody is still doing the work that, that was agreed with the client and not doing additional work because what it can lead to is the uh, not acting as a bank rule. That's the one that we're seeing most often. And I think we know that the SRA are very hot on that one as well. So yes, we've seen a few cases of that, but I mean nothing, um, nothing catastrophic. I think that's a really good point, Claire. Is that actually just for challenging ourselves um, and each other within our own practices? As you know, even if you're a legal firm or accountancy firm, it, it's right to challenge and and ask questions. I haven't seen any horror stories from 2023. I'm glad to say, um, but 2022 and before the there were a few, um, mostly where actually um, a bespoke system had been used for recording client money that wasn't particularly compliant or the system wasn't robust enough. Um, so actually, just a reminder that there are a wealth of um, systems and out there that if you need any help with identifying the right one for you, then we can definitely help you with that um, here. And it's just the importance of good record keeping as well. Um, so again, if, if you're in a law firm and if you were trying to do your, your day job of serving your, your clients on legal matters, you, know, you, you might not necessarily be best placed to look after the finances and, and client money as well. Um, so making sure that your team's set up in a way that you've got good segregation of duties and, and that you do have a finance function either, either if that's internal or, or outsourced that you can rely on um, to look after that side of your the business for you um, because we're all good at the day job but I know I'm not as an accountant I'm not a good legal advisor or solicitor um, so it's just sticking to what we're good at. Yeah agreed and I guess it's having that opportunity or giving yourself the time to make sure you do the review step so you you don't fall foul of the scope creep or or you know not documenting things and just rushing ahead and with do 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 all the time um luckily we haven't seen any horror stories either a few issues similar to what you've described um veronique with um software and not using compatible software for the client um account record keeping um and i think there's a lot of work that potentially we could do with our clients around that we're often seeing software 
firms, you know, increasing their prices out of nowhere, which is perhaps making clients and law firms look at what they're using. They want to make sure that they're, you know, using a, a product that they can get the most out of and that is efficient and modern. And a lot of the time, these client account um, softwares are falling behind and is not as modern as, you know, perhaps Zero or QuickBooks and, and people are wanting to entwine the two together. So I think there is definitely going to be some changes coming in relation to the software coming coming through in the next couple of years. I think that's right. And that, the four of us have been talking about it, um, you know, in the past few weeks, haven't we, that we're noticing a trend where firms are actually having two lots of software if they're not big enough to have some kind of bespoke system that covers everything, that they have one off the shelf software like like a zero or a QuickBooks that does the financial side of things and then another piece of software that just does the client client accounting uh, stuff because as Ellis says some of the some of the client accounting software is falling a little bit behind and isn't as modern as it perhaps should be um, so yeah. I think we're seeing the same thing and then I guess it's just reviewing the integration of those isn't it and making sure that they work well together and perhaps that's a bit of half of the battle probably at the moment so it sounds like it's been a busy 2023 period. Is there uh, any other kind of final thoughts, other insights that you'd like to leave people with? Well, I would just say that um, I think it's important to keep training up to date. I mean, it's important for all of us to keep training up to date. Uh, but I think during the pandemic, when we couldn't get to see clients so easily, we didn't do so much of the um, you know, at the client offices training that we did in previous years, and we're starting to do a bit more of that now. So I think it's useful to have somebody come in and actually remind everybody of the rules, how they work, what you can do within the parameters of the rules from top to bottom. And I include partners in that as well. It's not just, you know, the more junior staff or the, or the legal cashiers. It's, it's right the way up to partner level. I think it's useful to have regular regular training. Absolutely. I, I agree with that. I think training is key, isn't it? And just making sure that we're all up to date. Um, and that's something that you know we can easily offer as accountancy firms and, and be absolutely happy to help with. The only thing that um, we know that is quite a headache to a lot of legal firms is operating a client's own account. Um, and we are, we are aware that at the moment there is a proposal um, to change uh, Rule 10. Um, it's just to stress that it's a proposal at this stage, which may well help in terms of looking at moving the the bank reconciliation period to up to a 16-week period, keeping a central register uh, and making sure that those records are up to date. So it's just watching out um, and seeing what, what's to come. Yeah, I think that would be welcomed um, by a lot of a lot of law firms who who deal with those um, because it is it is heavily can be a heavy admin burden. But yeah, agree on your points retraining and just you know re- reminding the earners and cofers of their their responsibilities and I think you mentioned earlier Veronique about you wouldn't make a good legal advisor and I guess we appreciate that they're not necessarily financial financially minded so even just going in and explaining what a bank reconciliation is and the you know the red flags are if you like to look out for people might find useful or even you know going in with a set of accounts and explaining this is a balance sheet and profit and loss account because I think that's a lot of things we take for granted because it's our day in day out but perhaps that might be useful as part of that training. Absolutely spot on Ellis. I was just thinking back to uh, an SRA investigation well uh, not an investigation an SRA visit if you like just a rudimentary visit that they made to a client of ours and they said to the coffer who was a partner not a member of the finance team the um the inspector said to the to the coffer, can you just talk me through this bank wreck? And and I heard from others that the partner just went white as a sheet because <laughs> they didn't really know how to talk anybody through it. And of course, they're responsible for reviewing the bank wrecks. Mm. And you know why should they know? I know that they're not. You know we're the accountants and they do a different day job, so it's quite understandable. But I think uh, that's where we come in and we could train anybody who needs to know what to look out for in a bank wreck and as Ellis said more widely so you know we'd love to be involved if, if that would be of help. That's a good place to wrap up uh, thank you for your useful insights everybody I'm sure everyone will have taken something away from this session thank you for joining us uh, if you have any questions uh, on any of these matters discussed uh, or any specific questions for our guests 
please feel free to contact them directly. Uh, I will just pass over to the individuals to let everyone know where they can find them. Claire. Thanks, Matt. Yes, uh, so just look at the Buzzercott website under Professional Practices. My name's Claire Watkins, and you'll find all my details there. Yeah, yeah likewise, head to the Larkin Gowan website and you'll you'll find um, my details there, along with John Atkins, who's the partner that heads up this sector. Alternatively, I'm on LinkedIn, so drop me a message on there. Yeah, and me too. I'm on the Westcott's webpage, so find me there. We've got an insights page where you'll find other blogs, podcasts and other content. And I'm also on LinkedIn, so it's been a pleasure. Thank you for hosting, Matt. Thank you very much, and thank you everyone for watching or listening. And we hope for no more horror stories for 2024.